Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Summer travel season is right around the corner, and many folk are gearing up to hit the road. One of the biggest hurdles to being off the grid is keeping your food and drink cold while on the go. Now, what if you have ice cream or frozen food too? Your only real option to have both refrigerated and frozen food at the same time is a dual zone compressor refrigerator. And if you wanna run that off of a battery, the most efficiently, it has to be a DC fridge. But what if sometimes you don't need a dual zone fridge with a partition down the middle? Say you need to take a huge turkey dinner to grandma's one weekend, but the next weekend you need to haul 20 pounds of frozen food from Costco. Iceco's latest dual zone refrigerator the APL55 has a unique industry first feature where it converts from a dual zone to a single zone just by removing the center partition. They call this a flexi zone. And get this, this is also rain resistant and can operate in ambient temperatures up to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. But is it any good? Let's find out. The main feature of the APL5558 quart fridge is the new flexi zone feature that turns it from a dual zone to a single zone and back simply by removing or adding the partition in the middle. You can see just by adding the partition in the middle, it switches from single zone to dual zone and you can see that change on the screen. This fridge, unlike most, is actually designed to operate in extreme desert environments or hot car conditions and can hold freezing temperatures even if the ambient temperature is up to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. That's almost as hot as it gets in Phoenix. The compressor is also designed to run up to 40 degree angle from horizontal, so it's no problem in the back of your 4x4 Overlander. While the APL55 doesn't seem to have an IP rating, at least one I could find anywhere, Iceco does claim that it can be used under light rain conditions. They say you need to keep these vents clear of water and keep the fridge off the ground if the ground is wet. Now I have used four different 12 volt fridges from cheap Bouge RV models to expensive Echo Power ones in my side-by-side -side during heavy monsoon rain and muddy conditions and have had no failures yet. However, the screen on the one is pretty much impossible to read now because water got behind it, but the refrigerator itself still works. And all those fridges claim no water resistance whatsoever. No doubt this ice co being designed to be left in the rain should hold up really well even if it's a moderate rain. One other really cool thing, I know I had to do it, is that this fridge operates from 110 to 240 volts AC and from 12 to 24 volts DC. So you can use it indoors or out in virtually any country. Now, if you don't have a power station or solar generator and wish to power the APL55 from a battery, Iceco does sell this separate magnetic 250 watt hour battery that can be charged directly with solar, and I've demoed this in previous Iceco refrigerator reviews. I'll include a link to this product down in the description of this video if you're interested. Note that the APL55 does have a magnetic panel in the back to attach this battery to. As for size and weight, the APL55 is approximately 29 by 19 by 19 inches and weighs in around 55 pounds. The Iceco has been known for many years to have a high build quality for their top of the line refrigerators. And this one is certainly no exception. It is literally metal on all six sides, includes removable aluminum handles that are spring loaded and an aluminum lid handle and aluminum clasps and aluminum hinges. The sidewalls contain a massive 2.4 inches of insulation, trading a little bit of internal space for better cooling efficiency. This also keeps power consumption to a minimum, and we're gonna see that in an upcoming test. As for the display on this model, the display is no joke. This is the best display I've seen to date on any refrigerator. It's super bright and clear, easy to read, the UI is also easy to use with six clearly labeled buttons. There's one dedicated to eco and max modes, a single button press switches modes, no more searching through menus to switch that around. There's also a separate light button and a separate power button. Nice. As for other features, it does have a double internal light, so no problem seeing inside. It also has a drain plug, which is great if you fill it with ice or just wanna hose it out. It has two removable baskets, a dairy compartment, and check this out. Yep, that's right. 
a soft closed door. So no more listening to the kids slam the crap out of your fridge door. Last but not least, a feature I really like is the APL55 has its own external lantern light built in for lighting up the area in front of the fridge in the dark. You can also change it to a really annoying strobing blue color, perfect for messing up your night vision, but it certainly looks blingy. I personally would have made this color red LED instead of blue so that you could use it at night and not mess up your night vision. And of course, Iceco now offers an app, just like everybody else seems to have an app nowadays. It lets you remotely control the refrigerator from within Bluetooth range. Now, this is not a Wi-Fi app. It is only Bluetooth only. It doesn't require an account or anything to set up, so all you have to do is install the app on your phone and you can control the refrigerator directly. Let's go ahead and check that out. This fridge app is extremely simple. You have your two zones at the top, you have the voltage of the battery in the middle, whether you're in max or eco mode, and this big red button here turns the refrigerator on and off. Down at the bottom, you can click on settings, and it takes you to the left and right side of the fridge where you can set the temperature. You can set the mode eco or max, and you can also set it to Celsius or Fahrenheit, and you can also set the battery protection low, medium, or high. And that's all she wrote. And as for the warranty, just like all other Ice Co. fridges, this does come with a five-year compressor warranty with one-year warranty on the rest of the electrics. And of course, I took this into my secret laboratory where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it. Now, our first test with the Ice Co., it has been sitting at room temperature for several weeks. It's been sitting in here. So I'm going to go ahead and fire it up, and we're going to go ahead and see how long it takes to get to temperature and how much power it takes to get to temperature. Now note that this is a dual zone refrigerator. It has two compartments in it. It's typically designed for one side to be set the freezer and one set the fridge. Now you can set them both the freezer or both the fridge. What I'm gonna do with my testing is set one side the freezer, one side the fridge, since that's how most people are gonna use this because most people buy a dual zone refrigerator to have two zones with two separate temperatures. So let's go ahead and set one side to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The other side is zero degrees Fahrenheit. See how long it takes before the compressor turns off. See how much power it takes. Okay, we have the clock here. I got this zeroed out. You can see it says 13.2 volts, which is what's coming from the blue eddy in the background. I have the time reset, I have the watt hours reset, and the amp hours reset. So we're starting here at 1023, and we're gonna check and see how many minutes does it take for the freezer to get to temperature. Note that this refrigerator can pull quite a bit of power from your 12 volt port. Notice here on max mode, it is pulling 83 watts. I've seen it pull up to 100 actually for a short period of time. It seems 80 watts to 85 watts is pretty normal in max mode, so keep that in mind. If you want it to pull less power, you have to put it in eco mode. Okay, the compressor just shut off uh, two or three minutes ago, so it took about 45 minutes total. At 53 watt hours, four amp hours, to cool it down. You can see there it is showing up as zero degrees on one side, 32 on the other. And the thermometer inside says nine degrees, and this is sitting on the bottom. So what I've done is I've completely filled the refrigerator and freezer compartments full of stuff, and I've let it sit for 12 hours at 32 degrees for the refrigerator and zero degrees for the freezer. So now everything is at temperature, so we get an accurate result on how much power does this use over a 24-hour period. Okay, so inside I have a frozen jug of water right here, and I have eight bottles of water, and I have two lithium iron phosphate cells because I had nothing else to put in here. These are pretty heavy, so that's a lot of mass. So it's pretty much full. And I have down in here, so this does say seven degrees, and that's fine. These are never gonna be exact. Um, a lot of times the temperature is gonna vary depending on the height and where you place the thermometer. So let's go ahead and close this up. Okay, we're now gonna go ahead and run this for 12 hours. I got this clock right here. This is all reset, and we're gonna go ahead and put this on eco mode. So switch this to eco mode by changing that from a blue to a green light just by pressing that button. So now it's in eco mode. You can see it's set to 32 and zero, respectively for refrigerator and freezer. I am turning the light off to save power. So I am starting this test at 4 a.m. Time for me to get some sleep and I'll come back out here at 4 p.m. and we'll double the number and see how much power did it use in 24 hours. So there you have it, four o'clock. Let's come back in 12 hours.
And there's the result, 131 watt hours, 9.1 amp hours, and that's over a 12 hour period. So that's only 262 watt hours for a fridge freezer combo dual zone in 24 hours. That's really low. They did say that they put extra insulation in this. And this number is because this has been pre-cooled. So I did run it for at least 12 hours with the stuff inside before I started this test. This room is also about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not really a hot room. So it's not like this is 90 degree outdoor camping. Of course, if it was, you could expect to use more energy. Now, you would use less energy if you ran both sides as a refrigerator, you'd use more energy if you ran both sides as a freezer. So I did this one test with one side freezer, one side fridge, because that's how most people are gonna use it. So 262 watt hours and 24 hours is what you could expect to run under these same conditions. Now let's see what the thermometer inside says, because remember, we left that in there on the freezer side, and it's not reading anything. <laughs> Looks like it got so cold. Oh wow, it says minus 15. Apparently it got so cold it wrecked the battery inside. I might have to let this warm up, but then that's gonna throw off the temperature. Still not telling me anything now. I can probably Bluetooth to this and get the history uh, if it recorded the history. So let's see if I can do that. So it looked like the cold kind of killed the battery and it didn't save all the data, but it did go down to 1.9 degrees. You can see over here on the left-hand side, it says minimum 1.9 F, so that was where it was sitting at last night, 1.9 degrees. And seeing that I had it set at zero, that's pretty good. Now let's check and see how loud is this refrigerator when running on max and eco modes. Here I am about a meter away, let's see what we got. 43 decibels on eco, let's switch over to max. You can see the power difference here on max, it's almost 80 watts compared to 45 watts on eco mode. So a little bit closer to 44 decibels, which is barely significant when it comes to noise levels. So what do I like about the APL55? Well, first, I love that flexi zone design. That is so innovative. The entire unit feels so substantial and tough with all this aluminum and thick sides, aluminum everything, brackets, hinges, handles. I mean, most fridges cheap out somewhere on the plastic. I think these vent covers and these corner pieces are the only thing you're gonna see plastic on this entire model. Everything on this is metal, it feels very nice. And plus this thing is just sexy looking. My girlfriend came in here and she goes, that is like the prettiest refrigerator I've ever seen. I go, yeah, it is pretty sharp. It's, a, it's like a brushed aluminum, but like black. So it's actually really nice. It doesn't show up good on camera. It does have a lot of reflections and stuff on it. It's hard to take pictures of but in person it looks really nice. Of course, the lighting inside and out is fantastic. The screen is fantastic. It seems to hold its temperature very well. Now you do have to remember that these refrigerators are set up to have the center of the fridge be close to what it says on a display. So if you're reading from the bottom or top or back or front, that temperature is going to vary and you just have to kind of get used to where you put your stuff. If it gets too cold or too warm, you got to move it a little bit in the fridge. These are all like that. None of them are perfect. Um, they have cooling around the sides and the back and the bottom, but you know, they're always a little bit on the randoms. That's, you can't expect if you set it to zero, it's gonna be zero here, zero there, zero there. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a variance. But out of all the big dual zone fridges I've seen, and the bigger ones seem to have more kind of warm spots in them, this one seems to hold the temperature better and actually is a little more consistent in the middle all the way across. It's also one of the quietest dual zone refrigerators I've ever tested, and they also tout this is rain resistant, so that's just icing on the cake. I also like that this thing just sips power. Only 262 watt hours for a 24 hour period. This is by far the lowest I've ever measured on a dual zone fridge. Most of the time they take 350 watt hours or more. Isco has obviously done a bang up job with the insulation and compressor efficiency on this model. Of course, your mileage is going to vary depending on ambient temperature, how often you open the door, how long you pre-cooled your stuff and the temperature of the stuff you're putting in in the first place. Now you have to remember I test under specific lab conditions in a fixed environment that does not change year round. I do the exact same test every way, every time so that you have a way to determine which refrigerator is more or less efficient than another one because you can go back and look at any of my other fridge videos. I do the same test. You can see how many watt hours, what temperature it was inside, what decibel rating it is, and they're all gonna be different 
but under the same conditions in this room. Every fridge review I do, I'm told I'm doing this test wrong and it's not accurate to the real world. My answer is, if you don't like the way I test it, buy this for yourself, do your own testing. They do have a 30-day free return window. If it doesn't perform to your satisfaction, send it the heck back. Now, that being said, this Iceco APL55 is not all unicorns and rainbows. There are a few minor gripes with the design. First, it is a bit on the heavy side at around 55 pounds empty. So imagine throwing some food and drinks in here. You're basically gonna be crushing 80 pounds in no time. It would have been nice for a fridge of this size and weight if Iceco would have added wheels to it and possibly a pull handle. So it'd be easier to get around with one person. Otherwise, this may be a two person operation. Now, of course, if you're using this in more of a fixed stationary position and you're probably happy they didn't waste the space and expense on adding wheels and a handle. So some people are going to be thrilled with this and others will not. Now, what I do really wish this thing had was a built in battery instead of the optional external. Now, I've used the older Iceco JP50 Pro. When I say older, the thing's barely a year old, but I've used it since the day I got it on every single long road trip I've been on because I'm always moving food around back and forth between here and Phoenix, which is many hours away. The magnetic external battery does work great. Uh, I've never had it run out or be a problem. It charges up super. I really like the fact that it charges with USB power delivery. So when I get there to my destination, I can recharge this using my laptop charger, which is power delivery. Again, this is great. Uh, it's nice that it is magnetic and sticks to the fridge, but it does suffer from the same problem that all other 12 volt sockets have. And that's the fact that once in a while, that's gonna come out. This is not a good connection. You have to really get it in there and twist it, make sure it makes a good solid connection because as your vehicle's vibrating around, this is eventually gonna come out. I hate 12 volt sockets, everybody knows it, but uh, kind of hard to get rid of because they're still putting them in cars. Although now a lot of cars are getting power delivery ports. So maybe in the future we'll see some USB powered fridges. I certainly hope so. It would really be nice if this battery sat inside of a flush compartment instead of just stuck to the outside because I have had it fall off once or twice on the other fridge. Again, it's not the end of the world, but it would be a lot better if it sat inside of a flush compartment and hooked up with 100 watt power delivery. Ice Co, if you can pull that off, you would be the first one in the industry that offers a USB powered option on a refrigerator. I think a lot of people want it. A lot of these midsize and larger power stations all have 100 watt power delivery ports on them now. Let's go ahead and get that feature implemented. Another upside to running it off a of USB power delivery is that the fridge would run on 20 volts instead of 12 volts, which would improve its efficiency slightly. Now, the last thing I'm going to gripe about is minor, but it's also kind of annoying that when you take this divider out, you have absolutely nowhere to store it. And you don't want to lose this because this has special notches in the side that tell the refrigerator whether it's in place or not. Now they probably could have figured out a way to snap it inside the lid or maybe even somewhere on the outside. However, there are these loop things they call door extension ports. Now, I have no idea what that means. It's, it doesn't explain what it means in the manual, but what I'd probably do is I'd take this thing, put it on the top. These are just far enough apart that if you got some small bungees, you could bungee this thing onto the lid and then that way when you open the lid, it's still there and you won't lose it. And you also probably double as a cutting surface because you certainly don't want to cut anything on this aluminum. It might make a nice little cutting pad since it's plastic. Uh, that's probably what I would do because I certainly wouldn't want to lose that divider. Product price, the APL55 retails for $8.59. Yes, this is no cheap plastic Alpi Cole with a loud Chinese compressor that's going to burn up in a year. This is a premium aluminum wrapped Iceco product with a whisper quiet power sipping five year C cup compressor. It's not cheap Chinese junk. That being said, of course, viewers of Hobotech will never pay retail price. As I did score an exclusive discount code that will knock over a hundred bucks off the price. Yes, a hundred bucks. But this fat discount is for a limited time only. You can also get an additional 30 bucks off of that magnetic battery using the same code at checkout. Discount code with a link will be in the description of this video. 
Now as for competition, Ice Co's competition are the other high-end brands such as ARB, Dometic, and Angle. Now all these brands offer dual zone fridges in similar sizes to the APL 55, but they're all well over a grand, some are closer to 1500 bucks. None of them offer more than a three year warranty at best. And that makes Ice Co literally the best bang for the buck in the premium fridge segment, which is why I keep reviewing their new products as they come out because I've yet to be disappointed in one. So if you're interested in the Iceco fridge, a link and discount code will be in the description of this video below. I'm also gonna put a link here at the bottom of the screen along with a QR code that you can scan with any mobile device that'll take you on over to the Iceco store page where you can check out the APL 55. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now, till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. RV Golf Guy, Brian Blue, Bruce Johnson, Jason Soroka, Punch Chief Eisen.